Hello everyone, it's Michael from Marketing Me Design and welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about just using um, the Labs Extruder and using materials that don't fit or are designed to fit within a MakerBot Method X uh, material bay. So I actually recently procured my Method X. Um, reason why I got it, uh, some people don't really like MakerBot and really it came down to a couple different, a couple printers and uh, the Method X was most familiar for me because of I've worked with a lot of Stratasys machines and MakerBot was owned by, by Stratasys and some of the things they'd learned from building the F, F123 series were put into the Method X. Um, the, uh, of course, now MakerBot has shifted ownership um, to uh, with Ultimaker, uh, which could bring some new and interesting things, which is great. The uh, but with that, um, now that I have that platform, I've used it a lot, and it's been a pretty good printer. Um, not so happy about the cloud uh, slicer. It's, uh, I'd rather have it maybe inherent on the computer because it's just, you know, it's dependent on the internet and all these things. And, but still it's adequate and, and it's actually better than what GrabCat even offers that through Stratasys. So anyway, with that, um, really what I'm going to talk about is because there's not a lot of videos out there about using the MakerBot Method X and I have the carbon fiber edition and I have, um, I also have the um, extruder, the labs extruder, which allows you to do other materials, materials that are, are not MakerBot materials. I'm kind of sticking to the materials that have been approved by um, MakerBot to use with the machine right now. But ultimately, I might use some other materials. And some of those materials aren't actually put on the MakerBot spools. So they don't fit in the material bay so what do you do um, and I'll show some of this uh, as I go and put this together but there is aux ports with a Y splitter on one side of the machine in which you can feed the material through and then mount it on a mount the spool on whatever you might have to allow you to pull the material through however there is a design out there that was provided by MakerBot for their own spool which I'll show you in a second so in particular, I'm going to be doing a project I just because I want to test it out. I've actually printed some of this material already, but I want to do it in another form. But is uh, this Jabil um, material, a TP, it's a TPE um, SEBS, I can't even read it from my screen, TPE SEBS 1395A. So I'm imagining it's a Shore 95A. Like a TPU, it's rubbery, it's, it's flexible, it's a common material that people like to, to produce with. I actually use it to make these grommets, um, but I'm going to use it to do something a little bit different, which I'll show you in a second. The uh, But um, <clears throat> this material, which of course now it's in its bag, so well, it comes in a spool that is three inches wide and even it's just a regular round hole I think a one and three quarter inch um, or a, sorry a, yeah well whatever I'm not even sure um, one side's bigger than the other so um, so it won't fit in there so MakerBot actually you can get a file which will be in the comments below I'll show you where the link is um, where you can print different components so when you take when you access the aux splitter you have to take off this little cap off the side of the machine well then you can actually use that cap to install um, this so it comes in two pieces I kind of actually was testing this out so I printed it in carbon fiber it came out really well um, and then you just you simply assemble it I disassembled it just to show this, but you get snapped together. So now you have this on the back and this will actually hang 
where that cover came off of. And then there's three different sizes of this for the spools. This one's a three inch one, it'll fit that. I think there's four and two inch as well. And that just fits in and, and you end up having this nice little hanger that hangs on the side of the machine. Works really great. So we'll show how that's done. <clears throat> there is a little hole here, you can see. Um, and that is for feeding this through. It's a little piece of uh, tubing that filament goes through. When you get a labs extruder, this comes with the labs extruder. And that actually then, you actually need to kind of bend it a little bit, but that then feeds through that hole like that. So when you mount this, you can feed that right into the splitter. So um, you need to manually feed it through. You can't, it's not going to grab it. So you got to feed it through. They recommend you feed it through. <clears throat> and you actually take the, the guide uh, clip out of the extruder to get it through and you can see it and then push it into the nozzle and it'll start to pull and then close it and it's good to go. So, um, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, let me quick show you the part we're going to do. Uh, it kind of looks like an automotive part, but, um, and it's really small cause I don't want to waste a bunch of material on it, but I'll show you what we're going to do. So yeah, this is, uh, what we're going to do. Um, basically, uh, it kind of looks like, you know, it might be part of a cold air intake or something to a car. Uh, part or something of that nature so you have a top part that's kind of accordioned so it can be moved and two different size openings I just modeled this just as a gag kind of thing but uh, just have it to show off the material types um, this is actually pretty small it's not really much bigger than than that uh, it's only like one inch by one and three quarter inches on the base so it won't take too long to print and I designed it so that all the Edges are 45 degrees. Nothing is, you know, more than than 45 degrees uh, overhang, um, and even the little edges here, where you would like put a clamp, adjustable clamp in here, <laughs> those are just 45 degrees too. So it won't really require any use of support material. And speaking of support material, I'm working on a project regarding support material and. Uh, hopefully many of you, those who use, you know, PVA or SR30 or, or rapid rinse, um, you know, whether it's on the MakerBot platforms or some other platform, um, that's coming in the future. Anyway, so let's, uh, show you me loading up the printer and, um, getting the print started. So here's the MakerBot Method X, um, and what we're looking for is right here, it's up on the bottom and this comes off, Let me get you a closer look at that. Try to get some light on it, maybe a little bit better. Ox one and ox two, and there's two little holes here that you can just feed that extra tube in. So we'll show you how that's done. So I've assembled this and Ox one is your material. Ox two is your support. I don't know any of any. I mean, I guess you could use us other people's PVA and stuff to put in there, but it might help to just feed the tube in there first a little bit there we go that's it
so it just hangs right there on the edge next we will uh, load some material all right let's load some material so we're using TVA so we can use uh, we're using MakerBot TVA so we can use material bay 2 Fan of using mylar, mylar bags, so I'm glad this material comes like this. Before I shut the door, I actually let it pull it in a little bit of ways. All right, PVA is loaded. Now we're going to do the TPE. Um, okay, so here's the spool. Lots of material. Um, put it on. With coming down and towards you. I cut off a little bit of material off the end, as they always recommend you do. Now, since it's out here, it's not detecting it, and it's over in that screen. It says no, nothing detected. So what we're going to have to do is feed it up through here, and I'm just going to do that for now, just to kind of get it started. But I want to. Um, there's a Y splitter in here, which allows you to push it through. I want to look at the screen. What's going to happen on the screen? So we're going to load material and it's going to say, hey, the labs is in. What's the material that we're having in here? Now, like I said, showed earlier, PETG is what we selected on the print to do on the print. But here we're actually just going to put in unknown. So as it will usually do, remove any bent material, continue unknown detected so we're going to end up pushing it through so what they recommend doing here is and i saw this it, they recommend doing this also with carbon fiber specifically is pulling this off and getting it so you can see the material sticking out Let's see if we can't get a shot of that here my camera is not quite tall enough right now so I'm gonna just that oops I'm gonna bring that over here so you can see it and I'm gonna feed the material through you can see it's coming maybe so there it is right there and all I'm gonna do is just stick that down in there And you'll start to hear it pull it. You just attach that. And now it's just saying, okay, it's feeding in there. And confirm. Confirm whether it's extruding or not. So we're going to wait for it to run a little bit of material. There we go. Confirm. All right, so as it was going, I just kind of lightly was pushing in on that to make sure it was feeding okay.
Well, think about these encased printers and printers with a moving platform. Yeah, they're not the best for doing time lapses on. It's hard to get the camera close. Reflection. Things you gotta deal with, but they come on alright. Alright, we're all set. So let's run a print. So we laid out the model in cloud print. And this is basically what it's going to do. See, it uses very little support just on the raft. <clears throat> now, the one thing to keep in mind, you'll see at the top here, I've selected PETG on my labs extruder and PVA here um, for the support. And it's giving me an error right now because I don't have the material loaded on the machine. There's a reason behind that, and I want to share that with you. So, um, for some of these engineered materials, MakerBot has gone through the trouble to tell you what the best settings are for running the materials. So, in a link below in the comments, I'll leave a link to this, but there's a PDF that um, shows MakerBot Labs custom material profiles. So, we have different um, brands of materials that MakerBot has approved for use in the lab's extruder and they say hey if you're going to do Jabil PETG ESD here's the recommended settings and for what I'm going to do the, the SEBS 95A they say use the model as PETG support as PVA use these settings and as you go down there's different settings for different types of um, ma materials that are provided by other manufacturers. So I'll leave a link to this down below. So here's the finished part. Like I said, it's really small. Um, yeah, flexible. You know, this small part, really thin walls, you know, and even though I did design it to kind of collapse a little bit, um, it's pretty stiff right there. And this is so small, I can see why. But still, I'm always amazed at how well TPU prints. Like, there's some really fine detail on here. Um, and it showed up. It printed it. And I've, I've had good luck with TPU materials on other projects and other printers. So, anyway... Uh, Hopefully this video will help you just kind of understand this of using different materials with the labs extruder on the MakerBot Method X as well as using the aux port and splitter because um, that's something that when you're first looking to do a different material like oh wait a minute where do I put this so that'll help out so uh, again details of information that's useful will be in the com or in the in the uh, description in the video and uh, please like the video and subscribe for future videos and we'll see you later.